Your group's experience has come to a close, you don't have a lot of time, and you're looking for something quick and easy you can use as a debrief technique. This video is for you, especially if you're just starting out as a facilitator. I'm gonna share some of my all-time favorite debriefing techniques that you can use within minutes of watching this video. There is no learning without reflection. That's right, no learning without reflection. And I didn't make that up, that's a scientific fact. And in fact, I challenge you, in the comments below, if you can think of something that you've learned that occurred without reflection, I'd love to know. <laughs> Share it with our collective community as well. And maybe through a bit of to and fro, we'll actually learn together that in fact that is true. There is nothing you have ever learned in your life, the same for the groups that you lead, that has not occurred as a result of reflection. So debriefing is pretty important. And I think particularly if you're just starting out, you're looking for quick and easy techniques that you can use that will help draw meaning from the experience to help your group learn. Yet debriefing is probably the number one skill set that most group leaders and corporate trainers, group facilitators out there suggest is probably their weakest skill. And I've been in this game for over 35 years and it is still an area of uh, my debriefing, my reflection skills that I constantly are looking to hone. Now, if your idea of a debrief is circling your group up and asking a series of questions to the whole group, I've got a couple of things I wanna share with you. First, there's nothing inherently wrong with that technique. I'm not wagging my finger at you, but if it's the only technique that you know to debrief your group's experience, uh, you're probably meeting a great deal of resistance, if not boredom, from those experiences. And secondly, why push hard against resistance and boredom when there are just dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of different and quick and easy debriefing techniques that you can use to engage your group to reflect and learn from their experience. And that is exactly what I've got in store for you, including one of my all-time favorite easy debriefing techniques that I think you're going to love. Now, much like a bunch of no prop activities that you can pull out at a moment's notice, you can never have enough quick and easy debriefing techniques that you can pull out to help your group learn. In no particular order, but here comes number one, the whip around. Imagine a group, they're standing in a circle or sitting in a circle, and ordinarily you'd ask a question and just go around the group, right? But I'm gonna do this in a really structured way. Um, and you'll note there's a few ways that I actually facilitate this that help the process work more sensitively. First of all, I frame it, I want each person to think of a word or a phrase to respond to my question. So remember, we're talking about debriefing techniques, so it's inviting them to reflect back on something and think of a word or a phrase that embodies that reflection. And then, rather than starting from one person and going around, I'll ask for a volunteer to start. And if I feel it's comfortable enough for the group, then I might then go around to the left person all the way around the circle. But you could just simply ask for a group of volunteers. But the whip around typically starts with one person and it whips around all the way around the group. And importantly with this particular exercise is that I will on a choice. Challenge by choice is a critical uh, philosophical framework of all of the work that I do. And so if someone can't think of an answer or maybe doesn't want to answer, it's okay for them to pass. And then having gone all the way around the group, I'll go back to that one or more people and say, okay, you passed, would you like another opportunity to respond? And of course, respect them if they choose not to. Following on from the last one, we have fill the gap. That's a few similarities to it, but with one big difference. First of all, you might be starting in a circle, but they could be seated in rows or however they would be. And there's a particular sequence you'll run through. But this time, the framing is that you will start the beginning of a sentence and you invite each person to fill in the gap. So it might be, my highlight of the day was, or our communication could be described as, so you're thinking of something that is provocative that would get them to reflect and then they fill in the rest. Now, it could be that you simply ask them to use a word or a phrase, or you might ask for them to give you, you know, a, a lot more detail. I'd suggest in the beginning, start with something small and then expand if necessary. And you could do that a couple of different times. Again, you could be structured and work your way around the group a bit like the whip around, or simply ask for pockets of people, volunteers to respond 
to that question. So we're looking at quick and easy debriefing techniques, and this is a classic. It's called the rose. Now, when you think of the rose, there are two critical elements. There's the beauty of the flower, and then there's the, the harshness of the thorns. And so using this as a metaphor for your debriefing, you're effectively asking people to consider two different things to reflect on. The flower, you're asking people to think of the positive, the thing that is beautiful, the thing that was um, uh, meaningful from that experience. So ask them to focus on the flower of the experience. And then the flip side, the thorn, the negative, the thing that disappointed them, things that didn't work out quite so well, the things I would like to change, painful perhaps. And so they focus on that part of their reflection. There are lots of different metaphors you can use from a uh, debriefing perspective, but uh, everyone understands the concept of a rose. So when you've got that picture in mind, it's much easier to draw value from your experience from a debriefing perspective. Now, unlike the first three, this next one, number four, is going to actually involve a prop. It's a set of emoji cards. Now, you can find below a link to where you can get these. You can make them up yourself, but it's really handy when you've got a deck of about 50 emojis that express the whole array of human emotions. And the cards look a bit like this. As you can appreciate, each one of them has a specific emoji that captures the emotion or feelings of a human being. And the way you would use it in a quick and easy debrief is that you might distribute them on a table or on the floor and invite people to reflect on their experience and grab a card that uh, captures the essence of how they were feeling at some point during that experience. Or ask a specific question that is focused on something that you are asking them to focus on in terms of their emotions or feelings. That's one way. There's actually dozens of ways you could use these specific cards. They can also be used as an icebreaker or as a group initiative, but as a debriefing tool, they're ideal. And on the back, they have a bunch of words that capture the essence of what that actual emoji might be trying to express or emote. There's lots of instructions in the props, but have a go at that. And what's lovely about this is that you're using the creativity and the visual uh, concepts of your debrief to invite people to share. Um, and again, it's a prop, but it's something that you can create for yourself. But check the links below if you're interested in grabbing your own. And I promised you I would share one of my all-time favorites. Uh, often, when you're looking for something quick and easy, it means you probably don't have a lot of time. Or even if you do have lots of time, this can be very useful, because you do a quick reflection before moving on to the next thing. I call it the one minute debrief, and it is literally 60 seconds long. I'll make it really clear and I'll be looking at my watch that has a second hand or what other time device you may be using. And I frame it to the group and say, okay, in the next 30 seconds, and I'll be timing you, I'm gonna ask a question and you have 30 seconds to respond at any way, at any time. You can be talking over each other, it won't matter but I want you to respond to the question as a group, individually as a thought comes to mind. So you're ready? And then you ask your first question. It might be something like, what was something that really stood out for you in that last experience? Go. Now in the beginning, there'll be a whole lot of people who often are extroverted and have something to say. And what I find, it kind of just lulls after about 10 to 15 seconds, only a couple of people are saying, and then remind them, 10 seconds left, and then there'll be a bunch of more responses. And then after 30 seconds, okay, second question is, what's one thing we will change next time we move to a group experience? And go, tick, 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 tick. And again, there's a bunch of different responses. Now, you'll have your ears switched on, so will the group. You'll be listening, even if they're talking over each other, you'll get a feel for the things that they are talking about. And you'll feed that in to your information about the sequence um, of the program that you're gonna be running next. You might hear a theme around a particular issue that you might embed somewhere else into your program. So the 60 second debrief is clearly very quick. Uh, you can make it a 30 second debrief if you want and give them two 15 second periods. It doesn't really matter. But the concept is they've got this framework and they need to provide as much sharing as is possible as they can. Okay, so there's five quick and easy debriefing techniques, but that is just the tip of the iceberg. Last time I looked, there were at least 30 other 
uh, fun and easy, engaging debriefing techniques that you can use in a heartbeat. And the best part is when you go to playmo.com, you'll discover that all of the activities that we share, all of the step-by-step -step instructions are completely free. That's right, no registration, no credit card, no opt-in. You can get access and know how to use all of these five that I've just shared with you, plus a bunch more for free. So. Did you take away some value from this video? Did you come away with at least a couple of new ideas? Well, would you mind? Like the video, or if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, because that just means the next time we release content, which is regularly about once a week, you'll be notified so that you can continue to hone your group facilitation and leadership skills. And importantly, very soon, there's gonna be a couple of videos coming up that I would like you to click on because if you wanna continue your journey in learning more about debriefing, these would be some great videos to try out. In any case, thank you so much for watching and have fun out there.